pay the price. I, I wish I could talk about that more. Because I, I really feel like there, I was trying to work some of that stuff in, like with my morning Bible times and prayer and spending an hour praying in tongues and doing things like spiritual things that I would actually get things done in the spiritual. So now I have something more powerful, like I, God is, will give something and do something mighty through me because of those times. That leads us down a rabbit hole then. Well, that's kind of like what you what mm-hmm. you said as well, like you didn't see me that way paying the price like you weren't that person because my question would be right. to you now oh right. so you don't pray and pray do any of that anymore not like that you no. only did it for the wrong motive uh-huh. okay yeah i have a really hard time anyways with prayer as you know you know corporate prayer alone alone prayer in general not reading the bible like that's something of some of my favorite things to do but praying throughout the day and really important stuff, maybe things come up into my mind and then I just talk to the Lord in that moment. I just say to him, could you please help me with this? But I think we've got more discipline, Bree and I, now more than ever. That means like maybe once or twice a week we sit together in the morning and we pray. But uh, before that, when I would take my time early in the morning, wake up at 4.30 or 5, um, I wanted to get things done in the spiritual sense. Like I wanted to work something up and, and train myself basically for the wrong motives. Like I was thinking, if I pray now, if I uh, get up and read these books and read the Bible and pray in tongues so much, I would actually get something back from the Lord that would equate in power, authority, anointing, uh, being gifted, receiving a special gift from the Lord, like praying for people and they get healed instantly, but not just one, but every single person, that kind of thing. And that kind of thinking was in my mind. And that's obviously, uh, in my mind, and what I understand from the Word of God, that's not how it works. There is something about the discipline of praying, and we should never cease to pray. Yes. And I struggle with that. That doesn't mean that it's wrong, just because I struggle with it. So, yes, I think there is something true to it, but... I think I hear what you're saying, though. You're saying your religious disciplines were motivated by want, because you wanted power, authority, gifting, recognition, rather than being motivated by love for the Lord, right. wanting to know Him, wanting to know how He would have you live your life, maybe wanting both, to grow, in, grow in wisdom, but predominantly by the other thing. Right, of course, yeah. And that was the um, misconception that the idea of paying the price for anointing brought to you. Yeah, and so paying the price is basically you have to be... Um, have to suffer in some way. That means for me, <laughs> it would be lack of sleep. <laughs> right. Right. In the morning, like I would give up some time for the Lord. That's always what they would say. Mm-hmm. What are you doing with your time? Give up some time for the Lord. Don't you have an hour for the Lord? Don't you have 15 minutes? Right. Like read your Bible every day. If you don't, then you won't have such a good standing with the Lord. That's kind of what you would feel out of these let's say, uh, encouragements or motivational speeches by pastors or pre- preachers. And uh, yeah, obviously we're not talking, they're not talking about collecting treasures in heaven like Jesus did, but getting some stuff here on earth from the Lord for yourself so you would have a better life, more anointed, more uh, perfect ministry, et cetera, et cetera. You know, all that stuff that you would grow mm-hmm. in mm-hmm. every s- sense of the of the way, yeah. I mean, it is a really subtle twisting, though, because I think I do think the more you know the Word and the more time you spend with the Lord, whether your life looks better physically or not, mm-hmm. you know, you're not. That doesn't mean you're going to have more money, but your whole aspect is going to be more, you know, peace and with more wisdom. So you will be a happier. Of course, you know what yeah. I mean? so, there is an advantage of doing all these spiritual things, but the Lord is so good in revealing even your true motives. Mm-hmm. And he did that with me and right. I'm just thankful for it. And now, um, s- like I said, still recuperating from that whole, like, r- let's say revelation coming to um, terms with the reality, what I was doing and how do I do it now? How do I deal with these still, let's say, recommendations and almost commands like pray without seizing? Jesus said. So how do I deal with that now? From what perspective do I come now? Now it should be more relational than before. Before it was, Mm -hmm. what do I get out of it? I put my coin in on the top of the uh, vending machine and I get my whatever out. Mm -hmm. That's kind of what I felt I was doing Mm -hmm. if I look back to it. 
Kim is the prime example for me and probably for Bree too uh, about reading her Bible every single day for I don't know how many years now and uh, praying. She always has a prayer list, not again, not to show off just because she really does care. At least that's what I'm perceiving. So, well, she doesn't carry her prayer list around and show it to everybody. Not. Yeah, of course not. But, <laughs> but I know, of course. And she would write down answer prayers, which would be amazing, right? So she could see her prayer is affecting something in the world, right? So, how do you deal with like something that I said now? Why I did things like the spiritual disciplines of praying, reading the Bible, etc. What is your motivation? Well, I'm just thankful. That somehow, at a young age, I was taught that Christianity is a relationship with Jesus Christ, period. <laughs> so for me, it, it has always been about relationship and wanting to know him. And to me, that happens through those disciplines of prayer, Bible reading. This is how you get to know him. This is how you draw close to him. Let me ask you this. You being that person, extremely disciplined, you do know the Lord well, you know the word well. Coming out of the charismatic movement, when you were there and all these people were anointed or talented, whatever they were, did you have a question mark why you weren't in one of those positions? For me, it wouldn't have been necessarily that they're more spiritual but that they're just naturally, in the flesh, more gifted. Okay. So you never fell under a deception that some people had an anointing that you didn't have? No, I don't think so. Okay. That's good. I think it's because, I know this is debatable in some Christian circles, but um, because I heard the, I learned to hear the voice of the Lord from a young age, probably... 14 or 15, and when you hear God and you hear him affirm you, when you know he's leading you, then all the man things fall away, mm -hmm. and um, it's enough. I do remember being in a lot of conferences. Um, we always had every year, we had the intercessors conference at our mega church, and they would have the prophets get up there and and call out people. And I re do remember longing to have one of those, them call me out. But at the same time, um, I do remember the Lord whispering to me, you don't need this. You know my, I'm talking to you every day. You know my voice. Those people, they don't listen to me. They don't spend time with me. So some of them have to be called out like that. <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. um, so you weren't longing to be the prophet. Because <laughs> I think a lot of people are longing, I want to be that prophet. I wanted that too. So that that was my question. At times I did if want If you did that. want that and you knew you were, for a fact, pressing into God in every way possible, did you not wonder why he wasn't elevating you to that status? I guess, like I said, I thought maybe they had a natural talent speaking and it just wasn't my talent. I mean, my flesh for sure wanted that. But my flesh, of course, um, I think we all want to be somebody. We all want to be significant. Um, I never heard God say do that or do this. So I would have just thought, I guess I'm not uh, naturally gifted in those ways, possibly. But I knew that I knew him and he knew me and, and in the middle of all of those human things that we go through. And I suppose you knew he was using you too. You could see the ways that he was using you in your sphere and in your... Right. And maybe just knowing those verses, the last shall be first, the first shall be last. Or Good reminder. Just, just the different stories of God honoring those that seem weak and... I guess, balancing those human feelings out with the Word of God. That's good. And not, of course, you know, not that I was perfect. <laughs> like I said, of course, I longed for significance. But what I hear, ultimately, what I hear you saying is, because you were in the Word and you knew the Lord, when your flesh did rise up, like it does for all of us, 
the word of God and your knowledge of him trumped it ultimately. Amen. Yes, I think so. So somebody more like me, who is not as, you know, not as steadfast in the word, I didn't have the experience that Tilo had, whether he was being steadfast and disciplined in his spiritual walk or not, he was elevated and he was anointed. And whether I was sp- steadfast or disciplined in my spiritual walk or not, I was not elevated and seen as anointed. But I was never grounded enough, like you were, that the, that God himself and the word would trump my flesh. So I often had really dark moments. And especially because we were, um, you know, my mom and I were starting a new ministry in Berlin and we were we were working hard. When I look back at our journals of those times, we were nonstop street evangelism, prayer meetings, worship times, just going, going, going. And we didn't see very much fruit. We saw this and we saw that. Um, now I look back and I think we had it was a wonderful time. But in the midst of it, when you're hearing, you know, that you should be seeing these miracles and these people are anointed and that is anointed, you just wonder. What are we doing wrong? Or why doesn't why isn't God putting his anointing on us, his favor on us? But that really is the flesh. I, I totally agree with what you're saying. And I I know that it's true that if I had been more in the word and known him more, those flesh that that flesh couldn't have risen up in me to that extent and with that kind of power. And you're basically saying you paid the price but you didn't see the outcome. Not the outcome that the modern church promised me I would, but definitely the outcome that the Bible says I would see. <laughs> I right, saw. yeah, so you're kind of paying the price and you can see the right results coming out of it, yes. right? The biblical but that wasn't what I wanted. Yeah.